What is going on guys and girls? My name is James Alfixi and welcome back today to Roblox. How are you doing everyone? Welcome back, welcome back. Today it is time once again for some brand new Bee Swarm Simulator. But today it's going to be a slightly different one. So I did promise that I would make a video kind of like this. This is essentially going to be like a little tips and tricks and useful hints and stuff video, uh, which I kind of help will maybe just help a few people out with a few different bits and pieces, try and show you how I play the game. And yeah, what I'm going to try and do here is I'm going to try and include lots and lots of different little things for every type of player. So for people from the very beginning to more like intermediate players, then maybe slightly more advanced. Hopefully there's at least one thing in this video that is kind of like a good practice to do. And hopefully it's going to help you guys. Um, so yeah, how are you all doing? I hope you are good. Uh, yeah, a few of these things may seem kind of obvious, but, um, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go through them anyway, just because why not? And we're going to be doing them in, like, little sections or whatever. So, okay, so I think the main thing that I want to talk about is the sprouts and the brand new sparkles. I think that's going to be a really, really cool thing to talk about. However, just before we do that, I want to talk about the bug run. <laughs> so yeah, the bug run is something that I do uh, all the time when I'm playing. I don't really do it in actual episodes, but when I'm just playing and grinding... Uh, this is something that's kind of like a good practice to do because, of course, all of the monsters around the map drop items, which if you defeat them over and over and over, they will eventually stack up and you're going to have some more resources. So, yeah, the bug run. I think all of my mobs are now respawned uh, and this is the route that I take. So you can kind of do this whichever way you like, but uh, I use the red cannon to get up to the pineapple patch. If you don't have the red cannon available, you can just go and run through it. You can use the slingshot, whatever. Um, but yeah, what I do is I fly over here and then I start the bug run in the pineapple field. So yeah, what we're going to be doing is paying attention to the bottom right of the screen and we're going to see all of the items that we're gaining from simply just running around the map for like 10 seconds. Well, 20 seconds maybe. Okay, so we've got the mantis and the rhino beetle, of course, in the pineapple field. Uh, boom, we've got five pineapples, three blueberries. And we just got a bit of honey. So already we've got five pineapples and three blueberries for doing absolutely nothing. So yeah, after that, I drop down here into the bamboo field. Two rhino beetles to take down. Let's go and take you down. Boom, we got ourselves a blueberry and we got ourselves a gumdrop. We keep rolling through and we go to the spider field. We go and take him down. Dun, 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 dun. What are we going to get? What are we going to get? What are we going to get? Sunflower seeds. All right, okay, let's keep rolling. So from the bamboo, we go to the spider. Then we go to the strawberry. Once again, we gain ourselves a strawberry and five gumdrops, and then we run up the ramp here to the 15 area, and we go and take down the werewolf. So yeah, the werewolf is a pretty good one, especially for getting some items. So what are we gonna get from him? We got ourselves a ticket. Then we roll ourselves here into the pine tree forest, and then we take down the double mantis. Oh, they're very, very, they're very green, aren't they? Oh, there we go. Pineapples, blueberries, pineapples, blueberries, and then a blueberry from the field. And then we roll down the ramp here and we go to the rose field. We go and take down the scorpions. So let's go and take these guys down. Boom. Uh, we got ourselves gumdrops, five treats, strawberries and pineapples. And then I run up to this little thing here. I jump on the roof. And then the final few, which are the lower level mobs, but you might as well take them down anyway. We've got the level one ladybug, which is given as a strawberry. And then I like to kind of go, well, I suppose I can go this way. Jump up here or go up the ladders. We go into this field, the clover. We go and take down the ladybug and the rhino. What are we going to get? Strawberries and treats, blueberries and gumdrops. And then the final one, we drop right back down here into the blue flower field. The last rhino beetle. <sighs> we didn't get anything from him. <laughs> so as you can see, that only took like a couple of minutes, but we've taken down every single mob uh, in on the map, apart from, of course, the bosses and stuff. And we've gained ourselves loads and loads of stuff. It's super duper easy. And you can do this every, you know, 20 minutes, you can do this every half an hour, you can do this every hour when the werewolf spawns, it doesn't really matter. And of course, if you do have some quests running along in the background, um, then they will contribute towards that, so like a polar bear quest or whatever. Okay, next up are the collectors. So uh, yeah, as I kind of mentioned, some of these for brand new players, you might not be able to get to these certain areas. However, if you can, then this is kind of how I do things. So once again, I use the cannon and I always tend to start in the pineapple patch just because it's sort of a bit of a field on the side and there's not too much around there that links together. So yeah, collectors are super duper important. Of course, they respawn uh, for the treat dispenser every hour. So I go and hit the treat dispenser and then I go and run down here into the blue HQ. 
I go and hit this bad boy, boom, four hours. I use the teleporter, and then I head back to the red cannon, and then I hit the, the parachute or whatever, and then I jump onto this roof here, and then I grab myself the strawberries. So those spawn every four hours, and as well as that now, I use the red cannon. I go over once again to the star hall, star shop, whatever you want to call it. Boom, I hit my royal jelly dispenser. Of course, I get 37 because I've got all the gifted bees, but even if you have two or three, it's a good idea to hit this every day. And then finally... Uh, because this is the latest dispenser, I guess. Then I go and head over to the ticket tent. Uh, I go and jump on the gummy bee, and then I click the letter G. So yeah, apparently you do need to actually have the hotshot gummy badge, uh, goo badge even, to get into here. But yeah, if you have the hotshot badge, boom, final collector, goo dispenser. It's good practice to do this every single day, and, uh, you know, if you are going to be playing later on in the day, make sure you go and hit the treat dispenser and both the blue and the red HQ dispensers whenever they're available. So next up here is the Honey Storm. Now, this is kind of one of those things where, you know, you kind of think at sort of a, maybe a mid-game level that it's not actually that useful. So, I mean, there was a time where I wasn't even using the Honey Storms, but... Um, then basically tickets got added into them. So every four hours I like to try and hit my honey storm and I like to go and drop down into the blue flower field just because it's quite a long field. So the thing is you're not guaranteed to actually get a ticket spawning in here. But what I like to do is I got to kind of run around a little circle, keep an eye out and see if we get any tickets. We're we not going to get a single ticket for the video. No, why? Are you kidding? Oh, there's one. Boom. Okay. So there we go. One ticket. We only got one ticket that time. So yeah, sometimes you'll get none, sometimes you'll get one, sometimes you'll get two, you might even get three. Uh, but yeah, every four hours just for a couple of extra tickets, super duper easy, super duper quick, why not? So I've always kind of thought that a really sort of undervalued thing in this game is quite simply doing the repeatable quests. Um, so the Black Bear quests, they respawn every hour, and the Brown Bears uh, respawn every four hours, and of course the Polar Bears are always there when you complete the last one. So now we also have the Red and the Blue HQ Gifted Bees, um... So that adds another element to those, and of course those give you the extracts, which are super duper useful. As of right now, uh, I'm currently pretty close to unlocking the final Science Bear quest for now to get the second translator, and then there's going to be some new ones. Uh, but yeah, so now with this new update, the advanced crafting resources are dropping randomly from the repeatable quest. So I've got my repeatable quest to hand in, I don't know if we're going to get any this time, but uh, let's have a little look, see what we get. Uh, we got a Royal Jelly, 25 treats, which is kind of nice. Let's go and head over to the Brown Bear. And let's go and hand in with you. Dun, 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 dun. So we'll get Royal Jelly, but we'll also get a couple of tickets, which is nice. And then let's go and head over here to the Polar Bear. Let's go and hand in this bad boy. And we only got 10 treats that time. So yeah, it is, it is for certain. I've seen it quite a few times that one of the crafting resources has dropped as a quest reward. It kind of just depends if you're lucky or not. But, I mean, the thing about the Polar Bear quest, which is great, is you do gain Polar Power, which increases your Max B energy. Um, so it's always a good idea to accept them whenever you see them pop up and just have them running in the background. Because eventually, they will fill up, you can hand them in, and then you can get another one, and then there's just a few more free items. Why not? So if you're one of the more sort of intermediate players, um, you're going to be wanting to take down the bosses whenever possible. So these are amazing for gaining those crafting resources. And of course, I'm talking about the King Beetle and the Tunnel Bear. So the best thing to do is quite simply just note when the last time you took him down was and then come back when he has respawned. So the King Beetle, we're going to take him down there. Boom, look at that. Royal Jelly, Strawberries, Blueberries, Moon Charms, Magic Beans, Red Extract, Blue Extract from like literally doing nothing. Um, I know like, <laughs> I know he goes down quite quickly for me, but you know, I, I think we were taking him down quite a while ago. You've just got to get the technique down, but try and take him down every single time he respawns. And of course, on the two day respawn, we have the Tunnel Bear. Once again, always try and take him down if he's available, because in this latest update, the rewards have definitely been buffed up an awful lot, and it is totally worth the effort to just go and take him down. And boom! 10 tickets, 100 gumdrops, 10 moon charms, glitter, enzymes, and royal jelly. So from that tunnel bear, two of the brand new resources, which is really, really nice. It just saves you some royal jelly, and it saves you some of the basic resources, and it also saves you the time in the blender. Happy days. Okay, so next up, uh, we're going to talk about sprouts. So sprouts have always been something that is super duper useful in the game. And I think I've mentioned this quite a few times when, when I've been playing... Um, 
just on public servers and it always seems like people ignore sprouts and also ignore the fireflies. Now we'll come to the fire fireflies a little bit later on uh, when it goes dark. But yeah, the sprouts are so, so good for giving resources. Now don't worry, I completely understand that for some people, uh, the higher level sprouts are pretty tricky. Oh! Oh, I need to show you this first. Okay, so yeah, check this out. When you've actually got the faces, uh, you should always harvest them. So what is happening now is depending on which field these are spawning in, they are actually giving you extra resources depending on that field. So for example here, when the sunflower has a face and he's spawning his little magic sparkles, if we actually harvest them, we're getting sunflowers. So yeah, the sunflower seeds. So this is exactly what I'm talking about with the sprouts. The sprouts now have a bias favor of the items depending on which field they're spawning in. So even if it's a green one and you've got, you know, two or three people to go and take it down, always try and take it down because it's super duper useful. I've got a few magic beans. I'm going to demonstrate this. But uh, yeah, they now spawn different items depending on what field they're in. So let's just do maybe, I don't know, one of each or something. So uh, strawberries. Say, for example, you really want some strawberries. You want to make some red extract or maybe you've got a quest to collect strawberries or something like that. Sprouts or magic beans are your best friends. So yeah, I'm gonna build a sprinkler in here now If I go and spawn it in the strawberry field, we'll get strawberries But also something like the mushroom field for example if we go and use a magic bean in here uh, And we spawn a rare sprout and we open this bad boy up Have a look at this. Have a look at this. Have a look at this. Dun, 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 dun. Do you see all the strawberries? Do you see all the strawberries? Oh, and there's oil. Yeah! So you can see that the red fields, they're kind of slightly more weighted towards strawberries right now, which is really, really good because you can pick and choose where you use your magic beans depending on which resources you actually want. If we go over to the blue flower field and we use a magic bean in here. Oh, <laughs> okay, it's spawned a moon. <laughs> it's nighttime, isn't it? All right, okay, let's go and pop open the moon, the moon sprouts. Yeah, if you plant your magic beans at nighttime, chances are you might actually get a moon sprout. So apart from the treats, it spawns moon charms. I would highly recommend if a moon, char a moon sprout spawns uh, to completely ignore the treats and just go straight for the moon charms because they're way more valuable than just a single treat. Uh, but yeah, it's nighttime now, which is actually interesting interesting because I want to talk about the fireflies. We're going to come to the uh, the sprouts back in just a second. But the fireflies are amazing and they have been boosted since the update. So once again, depending on which field the fireflies are landing in, you will receive different items from these sparkles. So if it's spawning seed here in the strawberry field, we are going to be gaining much more strawberry drops from them. So let's go and pop that bad boy open. Uh, there we go. You can kind of see in the bottom right if you've got good eyes, but we're getting moon charms and strawberries. So if we do this once again, uh, we go and open them up. And then I like to go and run back around. There we go, strawberries. You occasionally get a few different bits and pieces, but it does seem that it's weighted depending on which field they land in. And then if we go up to the cactus, which... Actually, what would the cactus be? Pineapples, apparently. Pineapples and strawberries. I think it's kind of more of a generic field. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna plant a, uh, I'm gonna plant a magic bean here. I'm kind of I'm curious. But yeah, always go and do your fireflies. They're so good, and they have so many more items now. You can get like you can get so much more stuff from the sparkles. It's really really useful. Look at this. Strawberries, blueberries. Oh, look at them all. Look at them all. Ah, okay. This is a perfect example. So we've got the fireflies and we've also got just a regular sprout, a green one, spawning here in the rose field. Now you'll see if I pop this bad boy open, we are going to see an awful lot of strawberries which are spawning in this field. Because this is a red field, it seems like this is a great place to get some strawberries. Can you see them all? Look at them. Look at them. All those beautiful strawbs, man. Yeah. Check that out. Boom. Okay, we're going to go and collect these here as well. So yeah, this is just a great way to kind of tailor it. So you can use those uh, magic beans in order to kind of get a certain item or have a chance to get more of that certain item. Uh, or basically just pay attention to what happens when you break open a sprout in a certain field. Um, so for example, if we were to do one over in the blue flower, like so, and we open this bad boy up, we are going to see a lot more blueberries. There you go. That's like a perfect example. Can you see all of the blueberries that are spawning in around here? So yeah, if I had a quest to get blueberries or if I needed more blueberries for blue extract, I would use my magic beans in the blue flower field, for example. So same thing applies with the pineapple field. If you want pineapples, go and put your magic bean in the pineapple field. It's super duper easy. It's good. It's great. It's free stuff, man. 
Aha! Okay, check this out. So we've got another face here in the pineapple patch. And uh, yeah, as you can see, uh, these are so much better now than they previously were. So like previously, it was a chance at a ticket, but you mostly just got honey tokens. Whereas now, when you actually go and farm these, you get a mixture of all sorts of things. So the pineapple patch is kind of like a... Uh, a sort of random field, I guess, but we just got random bits and pieces. We got sunflower seeds, we got moon charms, we got all that good stuff. So yeah, whenever you see a face in a field, it is totally worth your time just for a couple of seconds to go and use your collector on the sparkles and to go and collect the things. I kind of feel like the combination of doing sprouts, doing fireflies, and grabbing the sparkles whenever possible is really, really, really going to help with your resource gathering. Uh, and that kind of leads me here onto um, the blender. So I think I've got some stuff blending here right now. Um, and I'm kind of always trying as a habit to at least have something in the blender going along in the background. So I, I'm, I'm obviously aware that like not everyone's going to be able to do this. But for example, if I just cancel that for a second, uh, it really depends on which resources you're trying to make. Uh, it's always kind of nice to have something going on here. So the one that I actually saw, which was I thought was amazing, was uh, you can make star jelly. So... I only looked at this really a couple of days ago, but a star jelly will give you a chance at a random gifted bee. So if you don't have very many gifted bees and you would like some, this is a really, really nice way to actually get some extra ones. Uh, and the way you make it is with um, three glitter and a hundred royal jelly. So that's relatively cheap, I think, for a gifted bee. And to make three glitter, you need three magic beans and 75 moon charms. So the magic beans you can get from quest drops, or you can also get from sprout drops. And your moon charms, quite simply, if you're doing yourself your moon sprouts, and if you're doing the sparkles at night time, then slowly but surely you should be able to build up 75 of these, and you can make yourself a star jelly. It's pretty awesome. What do I want to make right now? I don't know. What was I making? Was I, was I doing glue? Should we do some more glue? Yeah, let's do some glue. Uh, let's just do 10 glue. Boom. Okay, just a tiny little thing here, which I've, I've once again, I've mentioned so many times in all of my episodes, but one of the most important ways to make honey efficiently is to make use of the free field boosters that you have around the map. So, of course, you have um, one in the red and you have one in the blue HQs. And then the third one is up here next to the, uh, the mountaintop field um, shop. And yeah, these are super duper important. So like I've done so many field boosters uh, and they're always really, really useful. So I'm not going to I'm not going to do them in this video, but I'm going to hit them just to kind of see what we get. Um, so field boosters are really important for a couple of reasons. One, of course, it will mean you can make honey quicker in a certain field. And secondly, uh, every time you do a field booster in a certain field, you are contributing towards your badges and your badges basically make you a little bit better. So, you know, the higher level the badge you have, the more boost you have. And, you know, some of these badges are amazing. They're basically like having an extra gifted bee, kind of. Uh, and yeah, I would highly recommend trying to work on the badges. They're really, really good. So if we use the top field booster, what are we going to get? We're going to get a dandelion buff times five, which is an amazing one, actually. That's such a good boost. And it's really going to help with that pesky dandelion field, which isn't really the quickest field in the world. So for 15 minutes, I could harvest in the dandelion field and I would be much, much quicker uh, in order to do that. And yeah, if I hit the, 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 the red one, here we go. What are we going to get? Strawberry field times two, which is a pretty decent buff. It's not the greatest one in the world, but, you know, if, it, if it's there and you need the badge in the strawberry field, that's going to be awesome. And as well as that also, uh, you're going to be able to harvest some strawberries from that if you need them. And then if we go and head over to the blue HQ, we need to go to the top floor here. Let's go and head up. Uh, da, 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 and we jump up here. What are we going to get? What are we going to get? We're going to get a bamboo buff times two. I think out of the three, the blue ones are my least favorite ones. I don't know why. Um, but yeah, always try and do your field boosters if you are just grinding for honey. I know right now because of the new update, everyone's doing the quests, myself included. But always useful to go and use them for 15 minutes. If you want to have a huge grind, you can do it for 45 minutes, all three of them. And you'll have way more honey at the end of it than just doing it normally. And you'll have more crafting resources. Happy days. Okie dokies, don't mind me. Just another random green sprout appeared in the strawberry field. So yeah, once again, as you can kind of see, there seems to be an awful lot more strawberries in here than other things. So really, really useful um, for red extract or, you know, for feeding to red bees or whatever. Uh, kind of depends on what you want. Yeah, I'm just waiting for the stick bug. So I've mentioned this a few times here in a couple of the more recent ones, but stick bug is like the latest addition in terms of like bosses. 
and it kind of works on two different levels depending on what sort of player you are. So if you're a slightly higher level player and you want to try and go for the stick bug amulets, um, you know, those are based off how much damage you can do within the 10 minute time limit type thing. Um, so yeah, he's going to spawn in now. Uh, the thing is, he always spawns in the sunflower field. So this is kind of useful if you're a slightly lower player. And even at level one or two, uh, he is still dropping lots of items and the stick nymphs are also dropping lots of items as well. So it doesn't matter if you don't feel you can contribute to the actual big damage or you're going to get an amulet. Even if you can only do the first couple of levels, try and do it because he drops so many items. So yeah, I'm just going to do the first three levels here, which I know is kind of quick for me. It m might not be as quick for everyone else, but even if we're going to just like not get a very good score and we're just going to try and take him down, especially if there are other people in the server, it shouldn't be too difficult. Look at all those items. We're getting pineapples, we're getting treats, we're getting honey. We got three royal jelly as well from the stick bug from just grabbing the items, which is awesome. He's going to go to the cactus field now, so let's go and head over here. Let's go and do him at level three. Uh, yeah, if you, if you feel like you're struggling with the actual stick bug, maybe just try and aim for the actual stick nymphs. They drop loads of items as well. Look at that. They drop loads of treats and they drop honey tokens, which are going to be useful at a lower level. Uh, you've just got to be careful not to die, really. Stay over here. Let's go and take him down. Go and hit some vicious spikes. Da -da 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 -da. He did. And yeah, look at this. Oh, we got some oil. Yeah, advanced crafting resources dropping from these as well. We've got some pineapples. We've got all that good stuff. Always worth doing the stick bug. Oh, okay, he's going to move into this field. We'll do one more. We'll do him in the pumpkin patch and then we'll just sort of stop for now. I should probably just finish it, but you know what? I'm kind of in the middle of a video right now. So I always try and do him whenever he spawns in, even if we're not going to do like the entire thing. Uh, just, just do it. <laughs> I promise it's worth it. Okay, just taking him down there at level four. And once again, I got another advanced crafting resource. So I got oil at level three and I got some enzymes at level four, which is really awesome. That just saves me a bit of extra time in the crafting area. It saves a few resources. Uh, but yeah. So I'm going to stop the stick bug there just for this video. But another thing that I'm thinking now is that it's been half an hour since I started the video. And linking back all the way to the beginning of the video, what does that mean? It means that every single mob apart from the werewolf has respawned. So what are we going to do? Well, if we wanted to, we could go and do another another bug run. And we could do exactly the same thing. We could go back to the pineapple field. We could run around. The werewolf won't spawn because that's going to spawn in another half an hour for most people. Unless you have the... Um, the, uh, the gifted ability, which makes the respawn time slightly less. Um, or we're going to go and grab these, and we're going to grab some extra sunflower seeds. Oh yeah, and just a little thing that I mentioned as well in every code video, um, there's plenty of codes that get released for Beast Swarm Simulator, whether it be just random ones from on it or on the Beast Swarm Discord or from different YouTubers or whatever. Uh, but yeah, it's so, so, so tempting to just redeem like a bunch of codes in one go and get the free items for it. Uh, but I would always recommend doing codes one at a time and when you've actually redeemed those codes going and doing a field booster which is usually connected to them so not every single code does have a field booster uh, attached to it some of them might just be for some items but more often than not uh, there will be a field booster so for example the exclusive code that i gave out in my last bee swarm simulator episode which is for our channel uh, it had a two times pumpkin no it had a two times cactus field field booster so if your field boosters are on cooldown or, you know, if, you, if, you, if you're sort of in like a, a grindy session, always try and make the most of the codes. Um, I know sometimes you kind of don't want to grind for 15 minutes in one field, but if you do have the time to do that, uh, then it's always really, really useful. Okay, so I think for now, that's probably going to be about it for this episode here. Just some very, very basic little tips and tricks as to how I play and the things that I do in order to gain the items. So, of course, if you're playing on public servers, it's super important as well to kind of share those things. Um, so, you know, if you are doing uh, fireflies with people or you're doing sprouts with people, you know, help each other out. Uh, share the items. Don't be super duper greedy and grab them all for yourself. Uh, if you're doing some teamwork, then it's really important to do that. Uh, yeah, one more final thing as well is with the vicious bees. Um, some of the vicious bees are quite powerful and they do take a little while to take down. So if you do see a vicious bee spike in a field, the best thing to do is not run into that field straight away, but to call out the location on the server in the chat and say, hey, there's a vicious bee spike in the, I don't know, the rose field. Try and get two or three people to do it because it doesn't matter how many people do the vicious spike. As long as you do damage on it, you will receive the rewards for it. So yeah, try and share if you can, if you're playing with your friends, um, you know, if you're playing on a public server or if you're playing on your own on a private server, I guess it doesn't really matter. Um, but yeah, 
efficient. It's not really efficiency, but just enjoy it, man. Just just kind of do these helpful little bits and pieces. Do your bug runs, do your sprouts, do your fireflies, do your sparkles. Try and do your daily uh, ant challenges and your stick bugs. Redeem the codes, make use of the field boosters, and eventually you'll be able to get some cool stuff. <laughs> so yeah, thank you very much for watching. I really hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, please remember to poke me in that like button. And if you are not yet subscribed, go for it because we do Roblox stunt fun. But until next time, thank you once again for watching. It's been such a pleasure. As always, thanks. Rantsy up!